Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining our webinar today on how to improve water infrastructure design with Innovise and TopCon solutions. Today we're going to focus on Autodesk's latest acquisition, Innovise. Uh, to introduce our speakers, we have TopCon Solutions Software Sales Representative Casey Benfield and Nate Philbrick. We also have Innovise Solutions Engineer uh, Hunter Sparks. Uh, feel free to drop questions in the chat. We will be answering them at the end of the webinar. Uh, uh, so let's get started. Uh, Nate and Casey, take it away. Hey, all. Thanks for jumping on this uh, webinar today. It's your afternoon or morning. And uh, just let you know, my name is Nate Philbrick, and I'm on the technical side over here at TopCon Solutions Store. So what that really entails is I do some forward-facing content for our um, infrastructure products. I teach some classes, we do some consultation work, and we also build some templates too as well. Um, working work with a lot of firms out here in the Northwest and throughout the United States. Uh, I'm an Autodesk certified professional for Civil 3D, an FAA drone certified pilot. One of my hobbies in my free time is I like to integrate drone usage with our, you know, with Civil 3D, with recaps. Pretty cool to see what you can do with drones now these days, and it seems like it's uh, one of those industries that's really taken off. Uh, previously to my tenure at TopCon, I was an infrastructure specialist at Autodesk, so this is something that's, uh, you know, this presentation's uh, something that's pretty cool for me because when I was over at Autodesk, I worked a lot with the uh, hydrology products, and there was there was quite a few of them with uh, Civil 3D, and they've, you know, there's SSA, you know, there's Hydroflow Express, and all those other extensions. So this Innovise acquisition is definitely a cool direction that Autodesk is going in, and uh, I really, I'm really looking forward to helping you all uh, adopt this product and use it with your future designs. Uh, some of my personal interests are skiing, mountain biking, and whitewater kayaking out in the Pacific Northwest. I'm based out of Portland, Oregon, and uh, but I'm originally from the East Coast of uh, Henrik, New Hampshire. So, all right, I'm going to hand this off to Casey here, where he can do his introduction. He's going to give you an overview of uh, Topcon Solutions Store. All right, thanks, Nate. So, my name is Casey Benefield. I'm the uh, Topcon Solutions Account Executive that covers New England. Uh, focus on our Autodesk portfolio. I'm uh, certified for sales on the uh, Autodesk AEC and construction size, as well as uh, Enervise. Uh, my background comes from the civil construction industry. I spent quite a bit of time uh, serving clients that uh, did a lot of civil construction, uh, what have you there. Uh, personal interest wise, I'm located right here in central New Hampshire, so I really enjoy spending time outdoors and my hands are pretty full with my uh, three kids under five. So. That's just enough about me. The, uh, so I'll just give you guys a, uh, a brief overview of TopCon Solutions and what we're all about, and then Nate will uh, get into the technical side a little deeper. So TopCon Solutions serves the AEC industry as the retail division of TopCon Positioning Systems and as an Autodesk Platinum partner. The technology offerings, workflows, and productivity solutions between these two brands is why TopCon Solutions is a leader in the industry. We uh, really strive to build complete solutions for our clients. Uh, as far as projects go, you know, we're there when the first surveyor, when they uh, show up on site to map everything out and get existing conditions. We're there with the architects and the engineers as they develop the owner's vision for the project. We're there with the contractors when they're shaping the earth with the machine control and layout and uh, with the building contractors as they put the structures together and do the MEP work. And then we're even there with the owners uh, during operations and maintenance. Our team of experts that do our technical support and consulting all come from the industry and they understand what our clients are facing on a day-to-day -day basis. We couple that industry experience with our 20 plus Autodesk, 20 plus year Autodesk relationship. We can introduce our clients to software workflows that help maximize the success of their projects. Uh, just a quick rundown of our offerings. We do uh, sales, renewals, things of that nature for Autodesk and Innovise products and collections. We've got some custom add-in utilities for Revit, Civil 3D, and AutoCAD that we had put together to boost productivity. We've got numerous online instructor-led and in-person software trainings, as well as private custom sessions that we tailor to our clients' specific needs. But we've got flexible services, stuff like building templates, assisting with BIM management, and even more uh, really just as an extra hand if uh, your firm's behind and needs that extra bit of labor. Geographically, we're spread across the uh, northern U.S. We've got offices up in Seattle and Portland, Oregon. 
uh, across the Midwest in Wisconsin, Michigan, Indiana, Chicago. Uh, and then we got two down in Missouri. And then we're up in New England. Uh, we serve the Boston market all the way to northern New England and Connecticut, eastern New York. And then we've got a few offices down uh, Pittsburgh and in Maryland to serve the capital region and that kind of eastern part of the Midwest. Uh, we're really the product of the acquisition of a bunch of independent uh, specialty dealers that TopCon brought all together so that we could provide a, uh, a stronger experience for all of our clients and uh, really just build those field to, folk, or field to finish solutions that I keep bringing up. Um, it's really our goal is just to seamlessly connect the office in the field. We're also constantly investing in our own infrastructure to make sure we're providing that top-notch service and support for our clients no matter where they're located. Uh, you'll see if you ever visit one of our training centers or if you attend one of the events that we host throughout the year. So uh, that's kind of the background and the overall vision of TopCon Solutions. I'm going to hand it off to Nate Philbrick now, and he'll go into a little more detail on the technical side. Nate? All right. Thanks, Casey. So, yeah, getting into the nuts and bolts here, so to speak. So if we can get we can go to that next slide there, Casey, we can talk about all the different software, hardware packages. So one thing that you know I find unique about TopCon, one thing that I really like about it is you know, we have this hardware side of it, and we also have the software side of it. So we can go out and collect data, and then we can, you know, we can use whatever data we collect and bring it into our, bring it into the Autodesk software platforms. So we really get to see the full, you know, the full design circle, so to speak. So we have the, you know, if you're looking at the pre-construction, pre-construction phase, you know, we, we're collecting our data, we're collecting our, our existing conditions, and then whatever we're doing with our designs, we're using Autodesk products, so Civil 3D, Auto, AutoCAD, InfoWorks. Um, products like that and then we get into the bid phase so using the you know using the Autodesk construction cloud um, which is probably what you've been hearing lately or ACC that acronym so doing you know getting your designs out using build for your, your construction phases and then you get into our, and then you get back to our, our hardware products which is our, our machine control so doing you know bringing bringing those those designs to life so to speak so if you've you know if you've heard about Top Gun, you see in the past, you've probably seen some of our machine controllers, seen some of our total stations on job sites. So it's pretty cool to be a part of this full circle here, where we can implement it from basically from the field all the way to finish. So Casey, can you hit that next slide for me, please? And so you know we're gonna we're gonna be diving into the civil aspect of it here, or the AEC collection so to speak. So this is kind of, this is really what, what our focus of the presentation is going to be today. So we're talking about Civil 3D, we have InfoWorks Revit, Navisworks, and then AutoCAD. And then Innovice fits into this with this acquisition that we um, that Autodesk acquired last year. So now we have this, now, now we have the hydraulic modeling, so to speak, that we can, that, that's been now been implemented with this, with, this, uh, with this awesome collection. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to the next slide here and we'll let, uh, and we'll let Hunter take it off here and show us all the Show us so it gives a great new, great overview of Innovize and all the different offerings that they have. Uh, Hunter, uh, take it away. All right. What well, is the most stressful part of these presentations? Trying to switch over screen share. So, can you guys just let me know if we are looking at the PowerPoint, just so I can know I'm on the sharing the right screen? I can yep, see yeah, it, Hunter. Hunter. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you, Casey, Nate, and Katrina. Really appreciate you guys uh, for that introduction and um, for, for having me here today. Um, and what we're going to look at is we're going to look at an introduction to Innovize and Autodesk Company, um, you know, and how we are working with uh, TopCon Solutions. Um, so my name is Hunter Sparks. I'm a solutions engineer over here um, with Innovize and Autodesk. I've been here for just over a year now, um, you know, concentrating on being a technical resource, answering questions, um, conducting demos uh, for our different products, which we are going to get in today, into today. My background is um, seven and a half years of civil engineering between geotech engineering as well as land development uh, where i really uh, got to know autodesk really well using uh, civil 3d and some of their other tools um, and then i've been in the software sales side of things for about uh, two and a half years now um, and i'm based out of uh, denver colorado originally from richmond virginia so just a little bit of a background uh, about myself and so what we are going to cover today um, is, you know, who is Innovize, 
how do we fit into Autodesk? Uh, what do we offer? And you know, kind of wrap it up in a bow with why does this matter? So um, people may, may have been aware, may not have been aware um, that Autodesk uh, completed the acquisition of Innovize, um, a, you know, a little over a year ago now. Um, you know, and this was uh, really interesting to see from the outside. It was right before I started because, um, you know. Um, Autodesk has, has always really been an industry uh, an industry leader, um, you know, in the in the engineering field. Um, but and they've always had you know some tools that kind of handled the uh, hydraulic model modeling and the uh, water cycle. But I thought you know the acquisition of Innovise really shines a light on their dedication uh, to water infrastructure as well as um, realizing that they could really bolster their portfolio um, by adding an end-to-end -end solution in a company like Innovise. And so a little bit about in Innovise, you know, um, with, gosh, 35 plus years of industry experience, um, you know, Innovise really was and is viewed as a water structure software expert. Um, you know, we have 3,500 clients across the world. We're in 60 countries. As you can see, you know, we're 90% of the largest cities in America, the top 10 cities in the UK. Uh, about 80% of the largest cities in East Asia and 39 or 34 provinces and, you know, cover Australia and New Zealand really well. Um, so kind of the five, you can call them industry pillars, industry sectors that Innovise traditionally works in um, is water distribution, drainage, storm sewer and flood, asset management and operational analytics. Um, and each of these pillars are what we are going to go into a little bit more depth today, how our softwares are aligned with each of these, and you know a little bit of background on what each of these are um, and how our software helps solve those problems. And so, um, you know, this slide really speaks to um, how we are helping our customers as well as who our customers traditionally are. Um, as you can see, um, you know, there's kind of three uh, categories of what you could consider um, municipalities or government agencies with the water utilities, sewer utilities, and river authorities, um, all of which are trying to accomplish different, uh, different tasks, as well as assisting the private industry. Um, you know, for the water utilities, they're typically looking to avoid those failures. They want to make sure that their regulatory guidelines are being met and they're maintaining that level of service. Um, there's there's definitely been uh, a big in, uh, increase uh, in transparency on trying to increase efficiency, both energy and people, and um, you know reducing water loss, which is which is really big, um, especially nowadays as um, you know with with climate change and um, water becoming one of those resources that um, you know is becoming a little bit less scarce making sure that you know they're keeping their water in their system um, when you move over to the sewer utilities thinking about that wastewater storm water and a heavy emphasis uh, especially lately on green infrastructure with new uh, regulatory um, requirements being passed in different states. Um, they're trying to minimize those overflows, maintaining those level of service once again, meeting those regulatory requirements, and then they want to decrease that inflow and infiltration. Um, as far as the river authorities, when you're thinking of river basin commissions, watershed districts, you know, they want to mitigate that flood damage. You know, um, you know, it doesn't it doesn't take too much um, watching on the news over the past couple years of seeing how um, flooding is becoming more and more of an issue um, and trying to mitigate that damage, you know, meeting those regulatory mandates, uh, enhancing that water quality, and then expanding that public outreach. And then, of course, with the private industry, think design, engineering, construction, and consulting, um, increasing that efficiency on projects, trying to avoid those costly mistakes, continually offering value-based service to clients. Uh, and of course, they're, they're the ones that are really trying to stay on the cutting edge of technology um, so working with those private industries um, you know really is a way to bolster their technology and then help it get adopted by the other three um, so really even though 
these are different customers that we serve a lot of them can be tied back to the private industry and how they're helping those others um, so really when it comes down to it we're really trying to empower our customers with an integrated fit for purpose software to solve their core challenges and so um, how do we fit within Autodesk? Um, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people on, on this call, and I know, I know the, the TopCon experts know, know a lot about the Autodesk products. You know, you have that recap and that InfraWorks, yeah, Civil 3D, um, Revit, Tandem, um, all their different products uh, that already kind of work in uh, water resources, drainage, water design, storm sewer flood, and then that wastewater. Um, I, I believe it was Nate that was pointing out that he used to be an infrastructure expert, so he has you know a little bit of background knowledge of these things. And so they had some of these tools, but I think what uh, the acquisition of Innovize really added some specific softwares for the specific hydraulic modeling and uh, process design. So you know really falling more on that planning side for a lot of our softwares when you look at Infoworks ICM, Infoworks WS Pro and InfoWater Pro, um, but then also uh, InfoDrainage, a software that we will get a little bit more into later, um, falls in that design side. And I think really the workflows integrate the best with Civil 3D, allowing you to uh, move between those softwares is kind of the most uh, design forward and consultant forward software that we have. Um, and then of course, getting on the back end once you've already uh, designed and you've already built the project, we also have uh, two tools that help you um, manage and you know analyze and operate um, your infrastructure that's already in the ground. For asset management, we have Info360 Asset and then Info360 Insight on the operational analytics side. And so, you know, why does this matter now? Um, I, I don't think um, it is it is any secret that, uh, you know, there really is a global water crisis. Uh, water is becoming a, a resource that is becoming more and more scarce. You know, I'm, I'm located in, in Denver, Colorado, where um, water rights are, are extremely important. And, um, you know, if we if we're a lot of times in a drought condition because we do live in that arid climate, um, and, you know, some of these numbers really, you know, really pop off the page, um, you know, the scarcity of clean water affecting one in 10 people on earth, and then really just the economic loss, you know, it's an estimated uh, to be at 1.2 trillion by 2030, um, the climate change impacts. Um, so, of course, rising sea levels, um, you know, will have an economic impact on the world, but then also, you know, an increased demand for running these kind of flood analysis, because as climate change is impacting the design, we need to make sure that um, not there isn't as many people affected uh, by the increase in flooding. With sustained sustainability and resilience um, you know we there's really an emphasis on you know that sustainability making sure that we're redefining how we build uh, green infrastructure and how we are um, refining redefining how we are uh, building our processes to make sure they're more environmentally friendly um, and then of course with the aging infrastructure in the ground um, you know there's increased pipe leakages there's increased bursts I mean, you have emphasis uh, both at the local and federal level on the aging infrastructure and making sure that these don't become an issue. And then you also have the aging workforce and loss of talent. You know, we really don't want there to be a, um, a gap as um, some of these engineers uh, begin to retire and they have all that industri uh, industry knowledge, um, you know, really trying to find a way to pass that on to um, to, to the younger generation um, and also trying to give it easy to use software uh, so they're, they can com complete things more efficiently, passing off of that knowledge share and you know it's easier to get people up to speed and pass along that knowledge. And so um, there, are, there are five wet infrastructure solution sets that Innovise uh, traditionally has operated in and um, will operate in going forward. You have your water distribution, um, so thinking about that clean drinking water, ensuring it's available, ensuring those systems have enough capacity and pressure. Um, you have storm sewer floods, so simulating that 1D, 2D, um, the sanitary storm uh, flooding scenarios. 
uh, drainage design, um, real big concentration on green infrastructure, you know, working with the those consultants and that design. Um, you have asset management, so looking at that aging infrastructure, looking at those capital improvement plans, um, and helping you come up with the most uh, efficient and effective way to, to create those. Then you have the operational analytics of solving those uh, real-time decisions to solve uh, operational challenges. And so those are kind of the five overview sectors that um, Innovise works in. Uh, what we're going to do now is go kind of down the line, talk a little bit more about the um, about the solution set as well as the solution um, that we we have. And so for water distribution, um, you know, think about people that are trying to do risk and incident analysis so you know if you were to have um, a pipe that were to burst um, you know being able to uh, see who would need to be contacted, what area, looking at those customer points. Um, you know we talked about how water is uh, is such an important um, resource um, so making sure that you know you're keeping as much water as you can in your pipes as well as making sure uh, you're not losing uh, non-revenue water um, energy management i think there, there's really been an increased emphasis on looking at pump efficiency system efficiency to make sure that not only you're not losing water but also making sure that the energy um, that's within your system and how it's being operated is um, is as efficient as up to speed as possible and then of course system optimization we want to make sure that um, the systems that we analyze are uh, working optimally if there are changes that we can make whether it's in controls sizings um, you know those sort of things looking at that and then of course um, you know emergency response planning so if that pipe were to go down if you were to have a fire incidents um, being knowing how you would respond you know making sure that if a valve were to uh if a pipe were to burst knowing which valves to go to in order to isolate this incident um and then you have the more traditional water distribution thing uh items for utilities you know making sure it is sized for a new neighborhood or a new commercial development running fire flow analysis um, and then also looking at water quality um, as far as um, being able to run different simulations with um, with different uh, species uh, of contaminants as well as being able to do backtracing analysis to see where uh, where contaminants might be coming from in your system and so for water distribution we have um, we have two offerings we have infowater pro which is um, which is a plug-in directly with arcgis pro um, so it adds a ribbon allows you to um, utilize your model in a gis environment and then we have infoworks ws pro which is a very robust analysis tool um, works on a uh, workgroup database um, and has has kind of that background and so a case study for our water distribution um, products, this one was for Info Water Pro and um, the Metropolitan Utility District, MUD, um, was working with HDR to have, um, to have a hydraulic model um, because they, they didn't have you know, a, a robust one that um, had the ability to uh, really run the analysis that they needed to serve that 600,000 uh, population. Um, you know, some of the challenges they've got, uh, their GIS databases have been converted to CAD, um, and, you know, those CAD files had a lot of problems to start with. Um, you know, they had no existing full system hydraulic model, and so with uh, ArcGIS Pro, they were able to uh, use the the tools uh, in order to build that model, allow them to run, you know, efficient uh, hydraulic uh, simulations and, and able to build that uh, for the utility district. So on the storm sewer flood side, um, as we mentioned, you know, with climate change and um, the rising of seawater and the increase of, of large storm events, um, this area is becoming more and more um, 
you know, important and having a, mi uh, a microscope on it. Um, so what we're trying to do is really plan for tomorrow's growth and change. You know, that's where that climate change comes in. That's where you want to make sure that your system and getting that water uh, away from people as your population grow, um, combat sanitary and combined sewer overflows, um, limit the preventable flooding, study the flood behavior to mitigate that risk, and then of course helping to achieve regulatory compliance. Um, you know, our offerings, we have an Inforx ICM standard and Inforx ICM uh, ultimate. Um, and so uh, with with standard, think about doing your, your 1D simulations, you know, within the pipe, really at uh, one place for those sizings. Uh, ultimate, you can start doing the 1D, 2D analysis, um, you know, looking at those floodplains, looking at that uh, more flooding risk. Um, you know, this is a work group database, so uh, it allows multiple people to be working in the, in the software in order to commit uh, those changes to make sure you're working on the most up-to-date and collaborative environment and collaborative model. Um, you know, InfoWorks ICM is one of, if not, um, you know, our most uh, robust tool and especially for handling those large um, simulations for 1D and 2D in that flooding scenario and creating those emergency planning. You know, this tool, this tool is really uh, really taken off and, and is really something that uh, can handle a lot of analysis and uh, complete a lot of tasks. And so, um, you know, a case study on this one is the San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. Um, you know, they were trying to develop a hydraulic model of handling the city's large and complex combined sewer system. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, um, you know, they're serving um, you know, almost almost a million people um, have a, a lot of information. And where InfoWorks ICM comes in is with that robust engine and the robust software. You know, having a lot of elements, having a large scale project like this is something that can be handled, you know, very efficiently. Um, so for those large scale projects, this is definitely, um, this is definitely a great option for uh, for handling uh, combined systems or looking at that flooding. Um, so some of the challenges, you know, they were looking at the they need to, the characterization of overland flow. They really want an accurate dis de depiction of operations of passive and active control structures, and then multiple engineers working concurrently in the model. And that's where that work group database um, really comes in and is really a strong component because when you're working on these very large um, infrastructure projects, um, it can be tough to have only one person being able to operate in the model at one time. So if you have multiple people working uh, working in the software, um, in the collaborative environment, um, that's where uh, InfoWorks ICM really shines. Um, what's been really interesting about this one is it is with it being so robust, with it being able to do so much, it, it has traditionally been looked at as a very uh, a very complex software you know uh, some some people even thinking that it's you know hard to pick up but we actually did a uh, a video series on using Infoworks ICM just to set up more of a basic model and um, I think that's one of the really dynamic things about this software is the ability to complete simple um, analysis on your system as well as complex um, analysis on your system. So if you, you know, if people are operating in the storm sewer flood space, um, Inforx ICM is a really, a really robust tool and a really strong tool. So moving right along to drainage design, I think um, depending on the background on this call, um, you know, drainage design might be the most um, front of mind. Um, sector that we work in just because it is that design forward that um, the the consultant uh, forward software that we have um, what you're doing with drainage design is really you know that sustainable and cost effective uh, drainage design being able to maximize your developable land so make sure that you're not only um, capturing the runoff being able to handle the runoff um, having your water quality um, 
uh, numbers met, but at the same time doing it in the most sustainable way so that, um, you know, increasing that efficiency. Uh, of course, trying to improve the profitability of the of each design project by designing these efficiently. You have that seamless CAD and BIM integration for faster um, design. You know, you have the ability to bring in all of your CAD information, bring all of your info drainage information into CAD, and really that round trip environment is um, is really a a strong point of info drainage and then you know really trying to gain that uh, regulatory approval i um, come from uh, my background in land development um, and used to have to create drainage reports uh, would have to design the storm um, uh, the storm network as well as the uh, bmps uh, on a site and, you know, bouncing around between a lot of different uh, softwares can become cumbersome and inefficient. And as we all know, uh, the more times that you're having to manually input information, uh, the more times you're opening uh, yourself up for error. So being able to have that round trip integration where those numbers follow each other, um, you're less error prone as well as being able to create some of the uh, profiles, some of the information that would go into um, go into a drainage report. Um, you know, it's really it's really helping you design that efficiently. And um, I know one of the the things with uh, and, and sorry, our offering is Info Drainage Standard and Info Drainage Ultimate. Um, and I think one of the strong points of Info Drainage is um, a lot of times um, we we run into people and engineers that are using a lot of different software in order to create their drainage design um, having to move information back and forth um, you know maybe using using one software to size the pipes one software to size the bmps um, with info drainage you have the ability to do both of these within one software and make sure they're talking to each other so they're feeding off each other uh, you know being able to have your your holistic design in one place and then i think one of the uh, one of the other benefits uh, with this software is it really was designed with green infrastructure in mind uh, so it has the ability uh, built into the software to design some of those uh, structures and the uh, stormwater controls um, efficiently which um, you know, a lot of people are still uh, using, you know, Excel Excel spreadsheets, which uh, can can do can do a, a lot of things, a lot of a lot of um, it, robust work. But with info drainage, having that background in green infrastructure, as that becomes something that is more of a highlight for people, more of an emphasis, um, you know, that built-in design is something that's um, that's going to be really important. Um, and so this is a case study for info drainage. Um, one thing that was actually really cool about this one is this was actually done uh, for a grad student as her thesis uh, using info drainage. Um, so they were, use, they were looking to model and design and optimize the LID practice for flood peak reduction. Um, and the challenges that stormwater creates two major challenges in the state of Oklahoma, flooding in the form of storm drain overflow and poor water quality. Um, and, you know, creating the LID design um, to reduce the adverse uh, runoff impacts and then improve that water quality. And they were actually able to find that uh, the peak flow was reduced from the 100 year storm event in Oklahoma City, earning 30% flow reduction. Um, in one of the most troubled areas, like why a thriving district in Tulsa ex experienced 57 to 80 percent flow reduction, uh, reducing peak flows from the 100-year storm. So, um, thought this was a really interesting one, um, you know, especially with someone using it for their uh, to, for their thesis, um, and just looking at some of those numbers, that reduction, uh, the water quality <clears throat> improvements, um, you know, that's really something that can benefit a lot of people when they're when they're looking at these kind of designs. And then with it being um, uh, being able to bring in that AutoCAD Civil 3D information, which is um, you know still one of the <clears throat> top design tools that engineers are using, it really just makes a quick and efficient environment.
And then for asset management, um, you know, these, these next two, the asset management as well as the Info360 Insight are um, going into Innovise's cloud solutions. Um, um, so, you know, we are partnered with AWS on that, on that platform um, to provide provide this service and what asset management is looking to do is to support those capital planning decisions um, by moving to the cloud you do have that single accessible version of truth um, it all lives in one place as opposed to information needing to be pushed and pulled you also have um, the ability to um, have tiered access um, so really people of all different levels have the ability to get into this software and look at the analysis some can run the analysis um, uh, trying to achieve that regulatory compliance um, you know as um, you know we are looking at the aging infrastructure that of course is um, you know aging by each day by each year um, you know this has a way of uh, of looking at it all in one place and seeing uh, where the where you're more at risk uh, so we're trying to improve that capital improvement confidence by having that background as far as risk analysis likelihood of failure consequence of failure uh, giving you a place to um, store all of your CCTV data in one place um, you know we we talk with people all the time when they do CCTV um, some people just have it saved on a hard drive and they're moving hard drives around some people have it saved uh, as VHS tap VH s tapes still and passing those around and this gives you a place to upload all of that information be able to view it um, in one place and have it tied to those assets um, and then of course being able to capture manage and maintain your assets all in one place and so um you know, Info360 Asset uh, helped a North Charleston sewer district uh, by providing increased transparency. Um, so their objective was to ensure the right CIP dollars were being spent in the most effective area within uh, a rapidly growing and aging sewer district. Um, you know, Charleston is definitely an area where a lot of people are moving to. It is also an older city. Uh, so being able to effectively allocate those dollars is, is very important. Um, some of the challenges they were running into was being able to communicate uh, the many factors of CIP decision makers, decision making to stakeholders, um, all at different technical levels. You're going to have some people that know the ins and outs of asset management in these rehabs, and then you're going to have some people that are, are just looking at uh, maybe just looking at the money. Um, so being able to communicate some of the more complex parts of uh, capital improvement planning to people without um, as much of a technical knowledge can be extremely important. And then, of course, data integration across different types, whether it's your CMMS, CCTV, GIS, or Excel, because uh, you want to really, when you're running these analysis, you want to look at it as holistically as possible to make sure that all the factors are coming in are affecting your decisions. And with the uh, the rehab decision tree, um, you know this is a tool that is easy to create and understand the analytics, but also robust uh, to make it more meaningful and accurate. And being able to come up with those capital improvement uh, rehab decisions, um, and then pipe inspection QA QC. Um, you know, this is really one of the, the strong factors of moving to the cloud, having all of that information in one place, having that tiered access, allowing some people to upload the data, but then having some people to go in and be able to approve it. Um, you know, you're taking all of the, um, all of that information that people have been collecting for years and years and putting it in uh, one place. And so they were able to, um, you know, the CIP proposal process was more streamlined uh, and had the data to back it up, uh, saving the work hours. And then, of course, saving work hours ties into saving money. And then the Board of Commission Commissioners was, appro was able to approve multi-million dollar plans um, with no questions asked. Um, so really by having that data easily accessible, having the data be transparent and at the hands of the people that need it, you can really uh, more efficiently and effectively uh, come up with these plans. And then the final pillar um, that um, Innovise works in is the operational analytics. So this is taking your real-time data, um, you know, your SCADA that's data that's being uploaded and using that in the decision-making process. A lot of people have, have all of this 
sorry about that, have all of this information at their fingertips, um, but a lot of times it's just, um, you know, just downloaded and is just sitting there. Um, so what this is doing is allowing you to make uh, actionable, uh, being able to come up with actionable decisions, um, you know, really having that real-time access to your SCADA data uh, so that you can run advanced analytics, you know, really looking at minimizing that water loss, um, having built-in tools that are, purpose built for hydraulic modeling and allowing you to, to look at that non-revenue water, trying to minimize it, helping you look at those um, those water audits that people are conducting. You know, maybe they're only looking at it once a year. This, this gives you a way to look at it at more um, increased periods so that if it does become a problem, you can stop it before it gets even worse. You know, trying to reduce the energy and maintenance costs, um, giving you dashboards and reports for, you know, easy to, to digest, easy to look at, uh, easy to pull out in, uh, information, then improve confidence and, and calibration of models because what this allows you to do is have round trip um, communication between your model and your SCADA data to improve that calibration, uh, the ability to run what-if scenarios in in the cloud so that you can have help with those emergency response plans um, and really just taking your data kind of to the next level to where it's not just, you're not just viewing your data, uh, you're you're using it in analytics, that one data stream that, you know, maybe you would just look at the flow, you can now use it in a mass balance, an infrastructure leakage index, looking at patterns. Uh, you can create custom analytics as well. So all of a sudden that one stream of information can be used in um, in a lot of different analytics, as well as breaking down, uh, you know, breaking down data silos and being able to make the information more digestible and easy to interpret. Um, and so, you know, with with uh, Info360 Insight, we're tr really trying to improve the data visibility and usage. Um, you know, a lot, as mentioned, a lot of people have the SCADA system and it's collecting all of that data, and they also have their hydraulic model, but it's out of date because it just kind of, sh the SCADA data sits on the shelf and the model is really only looked at a couple times a year when they need to run this analysis. Um, so, you know, utilities are running into, you know, having to make uh, decisions on out of date models, having that SCADA data not as available as they would like. And of course, as engineers, I think everyone wants to be more proactive as opposed to uh, reactive, which can be hard to do. Um, and so by having that real-time data upload, you have the uh, visibility to make real-time decisions uh, and know that you're working on the most up-to-date information. We have this purpose-built analytics, um, so you have the ability to look at um, all, all the different analytics we've mentioned before, as well as those customs, and so that single flow meter can valuable, provide valuable insight. Um, then you have the ability to run those what-if scenarios, um, so that live data and your hydraulic model are actually working together to show customers that would be impacted by a pipe break, um, for example. So really, it's just taking that data and bringing it to the next level and making it more, um, more usable in, in that sense. And so kind of back to looking at this slide about why this matters now um, and what we can do and how, you know, how our products kind of align with some of those issues that we talked at at the beginning of this presentation. Um, for that global water crisis, you know, as water is um, leaving the system when, when it shouldn't be, you know, sometimes costing uh, millions and, and billions of dollars yearly um, to utilities and, and wasting that water, you know, the combination of InfoWater Pro and Insight working together in order to make sure that your uh, hydraulic model is as efficient and um, lo losing as little water as possible. You know, that climate change impact as flooding gets worse, you know, being able to mitigate that risk um, in order to uh, make sure people are not as affected as as they have been in the past or could be in the future without looking at that future view. Um, you know, I think a lot of our products um, can, can fall under the sustainability and uh, resilience category, but info drainage with that emphasis on green infrastructure, doing your design more efficiently, making sure the water quality numbers are met. Um, and having the ability to uh, have a microscope and increased uh, view on sustainability. 
And then with the aging workforce, um, you know, I think Info360 asset being that single source of truth, being able to store those inspection data, um, Info360 Insight as well, where all your data is um, in one place, easy to digest, you know, whether you are the engineer that has the expertise model as well as people up in the C-suite and being able to view that single source of information and, um, you know, being able to share that information as um, some of the more senior engineers move towards retirement. Um, I think that's where those products are really going to come in. So I think really covering all the different um, the, the different issues that we are running into, that is really where the Innovi suite of products can come in and really assist with these errors. And so um, that is the end of my presentation. I will go ahead and pass it back over to uh, Katrina and Nate and Casey, but just wanna say thank you everyone for your time and especially want to say uh, thank you to TopCon for having me on today, being able to, uh, to speak with um, some of the people you guys interact with. And it's been really enjoyable working with you guys so far. I'm really looking forward to continuing to do that in the future.